New footage has been unlocked in my photo album. Kathmandu in Nepal is the closest major city to Everest and most expeditions start there. After one of my successful Everest expeditions we celebrated back in Kathmandu. The Sherpa lit 20,000 butter lamps at a temple all by hand. Nothing. Kathmandu in Nepal is the closest major city to Everest and most expeditions start there. After one of my successful Everest expeditions, we celebrated back in Kathmandu. The Sherpa lit 20,000 butter lamps at a temple, all by hand. Nothing compares to the view from a mountain like Everest, but you don't have to climb a mountain to see amazing landscapes and people. We hire a group of Sherpa to help us climb in the Himalayas. We integrate them into our team, and they integrate us into their culture. They are Buddhists and hang these prayer flags so that the prayers will be blown upward in the wind. We have a blessing ceremony before the climb, and whoever is left at base camp burns juniper to help safeguard us as we're climbing. It is a very spiritual experience for them, as well as for us. We use aluminum ladders to get over deep crevasses on the mountain. The ice shifts and melts over time, so we have to add and fix ladders as needed. This would be circle. Yeah, but Dorji, why do you think you come with us every time? Because you're a good cook. Once you have a good cook, you keep your cook. <laughs> Never look for anybody new. This isn't a mountain storm, but it is common to see a vapor cloud like this over Everest. If you're climbing in one of these vapor clouds, the visibility is marginal. If a storm comes in while you're climbing the mountain, you may be able to ride it out at a high camp. But even sitting is taxing at these altitudes, and spending a few days in a small tent with another person is not an easy task, especially considering the last time we both showered. Annapurna is so difficult to climb because there are constant avalanches on the mountain. A large shelf of ice hangs over the face, so you really have to move fast. On Annapurna, we climb the mountain in just three days, my partner and I each carrying 45 pounds of equipment. We were already acclimatized, so we were able to do the climb quite quickly. Rather than having established camps, we moved our camps with us every day. This version of climbing is called alpine style versus the expedition style which we use on Everest. About 4.30, camp two, 
April 23rd. We got here at uh, 1130. It was snowing, which is normal. It snows from around noon until 3 or 4. And then it clears up. And then it's just completely calm. And it's like this. You can light a match. There's just no wind. It's so beautiful. The edge of the mountain has snow sticking off at an angle sometimes. You can't see as you climb whether it's an overhang or not. So climbers try not to go right up to the edge. It is especially dangerous in a whiteout where fog rolls in and the sky and ground is one big mass of white. You can wander right off the edge of a cornice. This is the view from Annapurna above the cloud line. Nothing is more beautiful. It takes eight weeks to climb Everest, and during this time, your body is getting adjusted to the altitude. We build four camps up the side of the mountain to set up the attempt for the summit. We build one camp, then go back to base camp to recover and collect more gear, then climb higher to set up the second camp, go back to base camp, and so on, until four camps are established. The final attempt takes five days, staying one night in each high camp. Then it's three more days back down. You start the summit climb at night, around 1 a.m. This way as you climb, you get more and more light, and you'll also have plenty of daylight on the way down. To help climb in the dark, we use headlamps. <laughs> 